Hey friend, in this video, I'm gonna be teaching you how to paint some holiday cards. Tis the season to get cheery and send our cheer out into the world, to our family and to our friends. So I'm gonna be doing three different holiday cards with three different sayings on them and three different flowers that correspond with the colors of the season. So if you are ready, let's dive in. To get started, I'm just using a pencil and a ruler to mark out three inches by five inches for each card. So I've got a nine by 12 sheet of paper that I'm marking twice on the top at three inches and six inches, and then at the bottom at five inches so that I can pencil out and cut out three different cards that are size three inch by five inch. So if you have a different size sheet of paper or you wanna do different size cards, obviously be my guest and pencil out what you need to in order to make those, but I'm doing three inch by five inch flat cards that I'm gonna put a little saying on the front and some watercolor flowers. So just marking out all of my lines and got them cut. And I have this jewelry from Golden that I absolutely love. I have three individual pieces of jewelry from this company. Thanks so much to Golden for sponsoring this video. I am so excited about these three individual pieces. I have each of them are engraved, beautifully engraved with an iris flower, some roses and some poppies, two rings and a necklace. And so I'm gonna be doing some customized themed stationery to go along with these gifts that I'm gonna be giving to some family members. I'm not gonna say who, just in case they're watching, um, so that their gift matches their card. So I'm gonna pencil out happy holidays for the first card. If you're not comfortable with cursive or lettering, just be really loose with it and playful with it. You can print instead of doing cursive if you're more comfortable with that. But I love doing bouncy cursive lettering because if you start to go too slanted and um, kind of wobbly, then you can kind of make it a little bit loopier to straighten it out a little bit. So I love doing that. So I'm gonna do happy holidays in pen. I have this gold marker from Sakura that is fun that I'm going to just outline what I sketched and then I'm gonna shade in the downstrokes to make it kind of look like faux calligraphy. Um, if you didn't already know, I am a calligrapher. I do pointed pen calligraphy. That's how I got started in my art business. I have a few videos on my YouTube channel that will show you how to work with pointed pen calligraphy, but this is kind of fake calligraphy. So we're just outlining or tracing over the sketch of the letters first. And then once that is all done, we're gonna shade in the downstrokes. So what I mean by the downstrokes is any part of the letter that is when you're writing it, you're going in a downward motion. So right there on the base of the L, down on the I, down on the D, down again on the D, etc. So if you're going up or across, that will be a thin stroke. Down will be, when you're using a pointed pen, calligraphy pen, you add pressure to make it thick. But for fake calligraphy, I'm just gonna wait for this to dry and then shade in on the downstrokes to make it a little bit thicker. But before I do that, I'm gonna erase my pencil marks. Once that's dry, we don't want any, any smudges. And then I'm going to shade in or thicken up those downstrokes just a little bit. It doesn't need to be too thick. And you wanna keep in mind when you are doing this, if you want it to look really clean, that you're tapering off at the base of the downstroke. So if it's a, a downstroke that goes back into an upstroke, you wanna make sure that it tapers into that across to upstroke so that it's not just a, an edge that you have. So I'm just shading in these downstrokes on happy holidays. And then for this one, this is gonna be the corresponding card that goes with the rose ring, the ring with the pressed rose on it. So I'm gonna paint a few roses and leaves on this card. Obviously having a beautiful gift like these rings and necklaces is enough in itself or just a handmade card is enough in itself. But when you can kind of tie in the look together, I feel like that's an extra special touch that shows the person you're giving to it that you took time to really think about the gift that you're giving them and then also the card that goes along with it. And it's handmade, everybody loves handmade cards. So I'm using a size two round brush and my permanent red light color or Scarlet Lake if you're using Windsor Newton. And I'm just painting in a few circles and half circles. These are really, really basic, really loose 
roses to kind of emulate what's on the card that the golden ring comes with. They have these beautiful letterpress cards that come in the packaging. So the, uh, the letterpress card is just what I'm referencing for the shape. So I'm just doing a circle to start and then lightening the hue that I have, the red hue that I have to give it these fluffier petals around it. And then I'm going to mix up sap green, cupric green and green gold and a little bit of black to get the, the green color that I want. And just using my size two brush for some leaves. I'm not doing anything very complicated stroke wise. I'm not doing any compound strokes for my leaves. I'm just keeping it simple, outlining the shape of the leaf like a teardrop or an almond shape and then filling it in with that green color. Some of these greens will be more yellow with more green gold in it. Some of them will be a darker green. And that's where the more handmade touch is gonna come in. I love the gold lettering with the red and green traditional Christmas colors. So I'm gonna do a couple more roses down here on the bottom to frame the lettering and on the top to frame it in the top left corner. You could also, there's so many uh, different layouts and arrangements you could do with the lettering that you do and the watercolor if you're doing both. I'm just framing this big rose with some smaller, more bud-shaped bud roses. But see how they're very, very simple rose shapes basically just circles with a few gaps of white space in them to show separation of petals. Same thing with the roses here at the top. And voila, our first card is done. Gonna be perfect to go with that rose ring. And now I am going to be painting the poppies. So I wanted to take a kind of Georgia O'Keeffe poppy approach. She has a really beautiful painting of these red, rich red poppies, cherry-like poppies with black centers. So I'm gonna be doing that um, in referencing the card, the letterpress poppy card that goes along with the jewelry that it came with. And so I'm just doing a couple of these flower shapes, nothing too special or spectacular. I'm just kind of swirling my size six brush around with the color. I'm using permanent red light and a touch of quinacridone red. Doing some almond shapes for buds that are still closed up. And then I'll paint in the black centers and the green. I'm using carbon black and I'm gonna make sure that it's really buttery consistency and thick so that it doesn't spread too much, but I do want it to spread. So I'm using wet and wet techniques. So while the red is still wet, I'm dropping in the black so that it kind of gets blurry around the edges. And I'm gonna do a little dot on the buds as well. I love this look, it's very loose, it's very Georgia O'Keeffe watercolor, and I'm mixing up the same green, green I used for the roses for some wobbly poppy stems. Using the tip of my size six brush, I'm just gonna lightly paint in these stems, making them wobbly as a poppy stem would be. Making sure to point to the center of the flower, the, the base or the uh, bulb of the flower. And then painting in the stems connecting to the bulbs. And as you can see as that it that paint that black paint is blurring and blending into the red. It's coming out really cool and adding a fun texture. And I'm leaving just enough space at the top to write some sort of message, some sort of holiday message you could write for you, to you, to so-and-so if you're writing it for somebody in particular. But for this one, I am going to write Merry Christmas. So again, taking my hand letter faux calligraphy approach. But if you're more comfortable with just writing in your handwriting, then go for that. The special touch of you making something that is cohesive and well thought out 
corresponding with the gift that you're giving them, I think is always the special treat that people are looking for. Now that I have my letters down, I have a big gap of white, sp white space that I wanna fill up, so I'm just adding in a couple more flowers, and then I'm going to letter. Then just dragging down that last stem. Now I'm taking um, what I thought I would be using a Pigma brush pen, but it was actually very dried out, so I'm not actually gonna be using this pen. But this would have been a really great pen to use because you can just put pressure on it on the downstroke and it will fan out and get fatter. But we're gonna use a Micron pen. And similar to what we did with the, with the gold pen, we're gonna shade the downstrokes. This is a size 05 Micron pen. So the tip size comes in a variety of widths. This is a 05. So I'm just lining up over my sketch. Not perfectly because sometimes I like to get fancy at the end, kind of at a, on a whim. But this is a style of lettering that I have been doing for over 10 years. So if you are confused about how to do lettering like this or you can't get yours to look quite right or maybe not straight enough or whatever, just keep in mind that this is something I've been doing for years and years. I was a wedding calligrapher for a very long time, would address envelopes with pointed pen calligraphy. And so if you wanna learn pointed pen calligraphy, I have a download that we'll link to in the description of this video, a free ebook um, that will get you started with pointed pen calligraphy. And then I have some videos on this channel as well that will help you. So just shading or thickening the downstrokes. This is very, very important, important. This is one of the easiest ways to tell right away if somebody knows the foundations about typography or lettering or not is if is where they place their shaded strokes. So if it's on the upstroke or the across stroke or you know where it's not supposed to be, um, then you know that they don't really know much about typography, which is fine. You can break the rules, but it is in a way a foundational part of lettering and typography is shading the downstrokes, only thickening or shading the downstrokes. And it takes a little bit of patience, a lot of stillness and muscle memory. So it takes a lot of practice to really get, get this technique down. I prefer using a pointed pen, a uh, calligraphy pen, instead of shading or going back after your writing and thickening the downstrokes, because once you learn pointed pen calligraphy, it's just in one foul swoop, you can get thick and thin lines through pressure and release, but that'd be a whole other lesson in and of itself. So we're showing a more hand-lettered approach to your holiday cards because everybody's got pens lying around. Not everybody has a pointed pen, a, an actual calligraphy pen and nib lying, lying around. So you can use a ballpoint pen, you could use a pencil, a color pencil, a marker. There's so many things that you could use for hand lettering possibilities are endless. So Merry Christmas with these beautiful poppies. And then I'm going to use that same Micron pen to outline or add a little illustrative touch to these poppy petals. You don't have to do this part, but I'm referencing the letterpress card that the ring came with and just using my knowledge of flowers to illustrate or draw in these petals, making sure that every single stroke on these petals points back to the center point of the flower, AKA the bulb, which I'm drawing in right now and the stamen that come out of it. 
If you have a petal that's not pointing straight back to the bulb of the flower, then it's not gonna look appropriate or aligned. So I'm just kind of eyeballing this stuff. You can't mess it up if you know where the petal is going. Just kind of outlining the red petal and then giving it some grooves and texture at the top and then little bulb and stamen in the center. This is a great gift to give to your mom, to your girlfriend, boyfriend, spouse, friend, best friend, sister, and showing them these little tricks or these acts of, in a way, quality time because you're spending extra time on their gift by painting and lettering a card for them. So now I'm painting in the iris flower. This is with Dragon's Blood watercolor paint and a lot of water. And it's kind of got this skirt shape or star shape with a skirt on it. And I'm grabbing more dragon's blood in a buttery texture, buttery consistency, and painting in this spine on each petal. So just starting at the tip of the petal and then down to the base to give it that contrast. And then I've got green gold and I'm going to paint in the stem of the flower. And we're doing all of this with wet and wet techniques. So a little bit of that green gold touching the dragon's blood is gonna expand and bloom and do some fun, funky stuff. This iris flower painting is going with the iris flower necklace, which I love. This is from Golden's Birth Flower series. So they have a bunch of different jewelry with a lot of different imprints that you can get on it. Some are floral, some are not floral, but I chose the floral ones because I love flowers, obviously. <laughs> So I'm using dragon's blood and then a little bit of this orange color and I'm gonna dot that in the center. And once this dries a little bit more, we're gonna go over it with more detail to make it really look like an iris, but I'm just doing these almond shaped petals with mostly water and a touch of dragon's blood and then doing petals around it with that darker dragon's blood color to add some contrast and to also kind of just frame the flower and then green gold for the stem and the leaves. I'm using a size six brush, by the way. Some more teardrop or almond shaped petals with a little skirt. And then for some lettering at the top, we're gonna do joy to the world. My sketch isn't going to be my final, what I do for with my pen, but just spacing things out to make sure we have enough, enough room for everything and then I can tweak it. So using the same micron pen size 05 and just somewhat tracing over my sketch, somewhat not. I'm gonna try and move up the two and the a little bit more so there's more space for a world. A 
I love combining crossbars on tees whenever there's a moment to do so. It's so fun. You could write fa la 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 la. You could write jingle bells, season's greetings. I was kind of struggling to come up with sayings that I could put on cards. I've done fa la 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 on cards before. We did it in a YouTube video, actually. I think it was last year, some lettering video. That's a fun, like, kind of quirky one. And there you go. Down, sh down strokes are shaded in, are thickened up. I'm gonna add a few more details on these irises just to make the details pop. We're doing a thick dragon's blood little stroke where I'm just doing pressure and release of pressure so it tapers off at the ends for a little swervy stroke. And then using the tip of my size six brush to paint in these tiny little C curves that point back to that middle spine or that middle stroke. Just for a nod to details on the iris. Just finishing up on that one and the last little bud just to make those petals pop. And then I'm gonna do the same for the leaves. I'm gonna thicken up the green with some more sap green. A little too, that was a little too like playful green on top of the green gold. So I'm gonna go back over it with some green gold with sap green to make it more tonal. So just applying this darker green to some of the edges of the leaves and the stems to just make it pop. There you go. I'm so excited to gift these to the special people I have in mind, um, especially with the personalized touch of having these hand lettered cards, hand painted cards that correspond with the gifts that came. Thank you so much to Golden. If you wanna check out these beautiful pieces, go to the link that we have in this video. This iris necklace, poppy ring, and rose necklace are gonna be the best gifts ever. I'm so excited. There you go, that was so much fun. I can't wait to gift these pretty little things right up. Um, we were trying to come up with a bunch of other different sayings that you could put on holiday cards and I was running out of good ideas. So to you guys, the hallmark creative writing pros, please drop in the comments below what you would write on a holiday card to send to somebody. Maybe fa la 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 <laughs> or season's greetings. Um, drop it in the comments below. I hope you enjoyed this video and we have a bunch of other videos for you to check out on this channel that we've done in previous years that are holiday christmas e related. So if you want to check those out, we'll link to those videos that we've already done that are holiday or Christmas themed. If you're in the mood, you're in the season. Um, so check those out. I also have, if you're new to watercolor or you need some more help with technique and all of that, the complete beginner's guide to watercolor on my channel is like a two hour in-depth watercolor class that covers every technique, every bit of watercolor that you would need to know. So check out that video. And then also I have my online course, The Art Within, that is everything from neuroscience behind flow state and how to drop into flow state as an artist to create your best work, the foundations of sketching and shading and developing 
uh, what you're sketching or painting from a basic shape. We talk about access point. We talk about center line. We talk about perspective drawing. We talk about a lot of stuff that's really in depth and help going to help you unlock and create confidence in your artistic journey journey and create your best work. So check out the art within it's jennarainey.com forward slash the dash art dash within. And as always, thank you so much for watching our videos, for engaging in our videos, commenting, liking, subscribing, subscribing to the channel. It all makes a huge difference. So thank you so much to you, the viewers and the likers and all that. And I'll see you in the next video.